Hi everybody, Brittany Haas here, Chief Adventure Officer with Alp Adventures Unguided. I'm here in Northern Italy right now, currently on a 10 day bike tour from Munich to Venice. I say 10 days, we're not riding every day. We have an extra day here at this beautiful castle where we are. This is the Burg Hotel, or the Schloss Hotel, sorry, uh, Sonnenburg here in Northern Italy. Absolutely beautiful four star hotel. We're spending an extra night here, um, which I definitely would recommend if you're on this tour. And we're also spending an extra day enjoying Venice. But that's not what I want to talk to you about right now. Right now I want to talk to you about keeping a healthy relationship between your bum and your bike seat while you're on tour. Those of you who have done spent quite a bit of time on your bike, you know that this probably is an issue that has come up for you in the past. Hopefully not anymore, but if it is still coming up for you, um, then keep listening because I have quite a few tips for you on that. Now if you're planning your bike tour across the Alps, this is probably the one thing that you want to put more thought and attention into than anything else because bike pain on a seat um, can really interfere with the enjoyment of the tour that you're on. Now, most people tend to think that in order to have a more comfortable experience on a bike seat, that they need it to be softer. So you've seen that some people buy these padded covers for the bike seat with extra padding on them. Some people have very, very padded bike seats and other people wear the padded shorts. Um, but in all honesty, there are two things that are contributing to the comfort of your bike seat and softness is not necessarily a big factor. The first factor is the fit of your saddle or where your sit bones hit the saddle where you're sitting on it. Um, you can actually measure this by sitting on something, maybe a piece of cardboard, a half-sided piece of cardboard that has the ripples on one side. See where your, your sit bones sit, hit um, and you can find sizing charts online for that to find the right saddle for you. We won't go into a lot of detail on that there already is a lot of detail available on that out there on the internet. Um, but you wanna make sure that your sit bones hit the saddle in the right place. The second thing that contributes to bike seat comfort is friction. And a soft seat works against you on that uh, and causes more friction between the, the fabric and your skin and causes more problems. So, and as far as the, the bike seat fit, now if you're coming over here and you're renting a bike, there are a couple things that you can do. One option that you have is to bring your own saddle if you already have a saddle. If you bring your own saddle, there's no guarantee that this is actually going to work better for you than the saddle that's already on the bike. The reason being with the touring bike, you sit a little bit more upright than you would on a road bike or even a mountain bike. And so when you're sitting at a separate, a different angle on that saddle, your sit bones are hitting the saddle in a different way. And the saddle that has been comfortable to you may or may not be as comfortable. Now I'm on a bike tour with two friends and they are both on rental bikes, but they each brought their own saddles from home. And um, the saddles are working, they're okay, but we had to do a lot of adjustments also with the height of the seat, the position of the saddle front to back, um, and also the handlebars before we were able to get to the point where the saddles that they had from home that they brought with them were comfortable. If you don't have your own saddle, that's also okay. Um, when you go to pick up your rental bike, you want to look around, test the saddle out, and see if there are other saddles um, that will work for you. It's also not a bad idea to have it already have a general idea of how wide your sit bones are and what kind of a saddle might work best for you. I'll put some links in the comments for that um, for resources. And if something happens with those links, please let me know they're outside resources and I can't control whether or not they break or not, so please contact me. Um, but then friction is something that you can do a lot about while you're on your bike tour. So we want to reduce the friction as much as possible against your skin. Um, one thing that I recommend for everybody is that chamois cream. Now there are a lot of different types of chamois cream. Um, I tend to use chamois cream just simply out of a tube because when you get it out of a tub, which many of them do come in a tub, um, that's not very hygienic to share with others. I believe on a bike tour with multiple people, it's nice to just bring one container, and so I bring this. Some people also just purchase diaper cream. Now you can buy this at any bike store, you can also buy chamois cream online. Chamois, by the way, is spelled C-H-A-M-O-I-S. So you want to apply this before your bike tour, um, everywhere that touches the saddle, that's front and back, um, and you may want to reapply it throughout the day if you choose. Some people also apply it in the evening if they have some irritation there to help with that. You want to apply that. You also want to take a look at your bike shorts. Now, chamois, this is also the term that we use for the padded bike shorts that people tend to wear around their bikes. 
there's a lot of controversy about whether or not the padding helps, primarily because the padding also creates some other issues with friction. I personally do wear padded shorts. One of my friends who I'm on the trip with does not wear padded shorts. Um, and we could go into this de debate for a long time, but we won't today. However, if you do choose to wear the padded shorts, I definitely would recommend that you invest in a good pair. A cheap pair of padded shorts is not well made. It's going to cause more friction and might possibly have some seams that are in poor places that cause more pain for you than less. So if you can't afford or you don't want to pay for a very high quality chamois, and I won't get into what is high quality and what isn't, go ahead and plug that into Google, you'll find plenty of resources in, into that. But if you don't want to spend that money, then what you do want is a pair of bicycle shorts that are tight fitting and slippery, meaning they're going to slip on the seat. Or if you wear a pair of regular shorts, like I wear these shorts often over my bicycling shorts uh, or my, my chamois liners, something where there's going to be a slippery surface so that you're not causing any friction happening on your skin. Now another thing that makes a huge difference for you on a bicycle is whether or not you're wearing underwear underneath your chamois shorts or your regular unpadded bicycling shorts. Any seam that you have between your bum and your bike seat is going to cause some problems for you. So most cyclists don't wear underwear underneath their bike shorts. This is a very personal decision. There are some who do. Now, when you're done with your day of cycling, it's really important that you get out of your shorts and air out as quickly as possible. You don't wanna be walking around um, in your chamois shorts or your bicycle shorts for a long time after you're done. So get out of those shorts. Uh, it's really important to have a clean, clean pair every day. So on this tour, I'm carrying two pairs with me and I'm washing one wearing the other, washing one, wearing the other, and moving through like that. Um, being in this more moist climate, my shorts don't always dry overnight, so I often end up dropping them onto the back of my bike and letting them dry in the wind throughout the day as I cycle as well. Um, but it's really important, especially if you do start to get some irritations down there, that you keep everything as clean as you possibly can. Now let's talk a little bit about preparing for your bike tour. One of the most important things that you can be doing prior to your bike tour is getting your bum on a bike seat as much as possible. And for many of you, hopefully that means you're riding your own bike around town, riding it to the grocery store, to the restaurant, to the ice cream shop, uh, wherever you can get on your bike to go to every chance you have. And if that's a change in lifestyle for you, you may also notice some very positive effects that come from that, both mentally and physically. Um, but in addition to that, if you don't have your own bicycle right now, or if you just don't live in an area where it's safe or convenient to ride your bike around, at the very least, I would get yourself into a spin class a couple times a week, an indoor cycling class, and spend some time on that bicycle seat and adjust as much as possible. Now, an indoor cycling class doesn't give you all the benefits of being on a bicycle, um, because one of the things that you experience on a, an actual bicycle is you have a lot of bumps in the trail. When you're on an indoor bike, um, you certainly don't experience that but it'll help you move in the right direction. So I hope that you learned a little bit today. I hope that some of these tips are helpful for you. I imagine that some of these tips are helpful for a lot of people. I wish I had um, found them earlier than I did in my cycling life. Please do be sure to share the video with your friends and anybody that you think might be interested. If you wanna check out our bike tours or do a bike tour across the Alps yourself, staying in this beautiful castle along the way, then you can check them out online, www.alpadventuresunguided.com. Hop onto Adventures and then check out the bike tours and they're all listed there for you. Uh, we also organize custom bike tours. We can customize the price, we can customize the difficulty level, and we can customize the duration of the tour. And please make sure to give us a like on this video on YouTube and also give us a follow and hopefully you'll join us for some future videos that we'll do about um, making bike touring as pleasant as possible. Thanks everyone, happy adventuring.